thank you for watching this. We appreciate you taking the time and I trust that as you look at this uh, recording about 1 Corinthians that you find it a helpful thing. <clears throat> we're reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, we're thinking of this section here where the Apostle is dealing with the divisions that had been established in Corinth and it was a very sad thing that Christians were dividing themselves up. Of course that is characteristic sadly down the years of Christians so often being divisive for reasons that um, well the scripture completely uh, condemns. Listen to what the Apostle says in verse 12. Now this I say that every one of you said I am of Paul and I have Apollos and I have Cephas and I have Christ. The Apostle is really saying these divisions they are absolutely wrong and you might say well I thought to be of Christ would be a good thing but I would assume that what the Apostle is saying here is that to say you're of Christ and therefore different from everybody else superior to that you are unique in your attachment and association to him makes you arrogant and proud and therefore denies the very thing you're claiming because to follow Christ would teach humility and submissiveness and lowliness of character. Paul is certainly saying that there is no reason to follow him, there's no reason to follow Paulus, and there's no reason to follow Cephas. That wouldn't be because he would be insulting them, for he talks at other times about these men in very respective terms, respecting terms, and the apostle would not be undermining or berating these men. But what he is, is saying that to be divisive and to follow men as opposed to loving Christ as one whole united church is a wrong thing. You see, he goes on to say in verse 13, is Christ divided? Christ is not divided. There is one Lord, there is one faith. Ephesians chapter 4 would teach that. We've been brought into one unity in Christ. Christ is the Lord of all. That's what it says in chapter 1 verse 2, uh, that we call in common with all saints that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. There is no division in Christ as far as Christian testimony is concerned. Is Christ divided? He says, has Christ been divided by your controversy? Was Paul crucified for you? Why? He says, why would you claim to follow Paul? Were you baptised in the name of Paul? He says, actually, I thank God that I baptised none of you but Crispus and Gaius. I didn't do that. And that's probably a very wise thing for preachers not to get involved in baptising people. People like to claim I was baptised by and somebody spoke at this and that and the next thing. Paul says, I, I didn't baptise anybody apart from Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptised in my own name. He says, I'm baptised. Baptism is in the name of the Lord Jesus and really it's got no significance what preacher does it or what great person is involved or who people deem to be a great person. He says, I baptised also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptised any other. Paul was saying, yes, there were some I baptised, but well, you will learn that the house of Stephanus, if I remember correctly, that they were very early on in the, the numbers of people who were saved in Corinth. You see, Paul says in verse 17, For Christ sent me not to baptise, but to preach the gospel. He said, My purpose was not to gain a following, but to point people to Christ, to declare the glad tidings. I wasn't coming to gain an, a following by my intelligence, because he said I didn't come to preach with the wisdom of men, or the wisdom of words. He says, in case I should undermine the cross of Christ, I came to preach Christ and him crucified. Now Paul will develop this theme. When you go into chapter 2, he will say, I, in the beginning of the chapter, I came to you not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Christ, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. He says, my preaching, my speech, my preaching was not with enticing. The apostle is saying, I didn't come to gain a following by the way I preached. I came to declare Christ. And he's going to then develop this idea. He's going to develop the fact that preaching is about the cross. It's for the perishing. It's deemed foolish by the world. But it is the effective means by which men and women know the power of God in salvation. Is that a wonderful thing? You see, he says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Those that are perishing deem the message of a cross and a man on a cross and Christ dying for sins to be a foolish thing. How could he produce salvation? Well, the apostle says this, I didn't come to draw a following after me. I came to preach about Christ. 
And he said, actually, what you're doing here is elevating men and wisdom and intellect and understanding and undermining the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to come back to this section in the next uh, teaching session on this. But I trust that as you think about this today, we might apply this. We can follow preachers. We can follow men that are deemed to be great evangelists, great pastors, great shepherds of God's people. We can put people on a pedestal. Of course, we appreciate the Apostle Paul is complimented by Peter. And Peter's writings, our beloved brother Paul, who understands and teaches things that are complex. Of course, we revere and value those that God has used to teach us. But we must not follow them and divide the church. We must put everybody in the same basket, everybody in the same basis, that there is no division even to claim superiority following Christ in a better way than others is wrong. May we learn that division is not of God and may we be encouraged to be united as we seek to serve him. Trust the Lord would bless this to us.